Hello and welcome to Xena Warrior Podcast Minisodes. My name is Mary and I'm joined, as always, by my two abundant co-hosts, Katie. Hello. And Libby. Hello. Have you not used abundant before? According to my notes, I have not. Wow. But maybe I have. That makes me think of Pose. Pose. A good show. Yes, on FX. <laughs> maybe soon on Hulu. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year! Yeah. 2020. 2020. Feels like a fake number. It's pretty crazy when you think <laughs> about it, actually. Yeah, it definitely feels like a sci-fi movie where we should be wearing, like, silver lycra outfits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all the cars should be flying, obviously. Obviously. Mm. Well, it's not. But yep. I guess our world could be a sci-fi world right Sure. Now. Let's, not, let's not go there. <laughs> back from uh, vacation. Hopefully we're, everybody yeah. had a nice... A nice holiday. Yeah. Do anything? <laughs> Us? I don't know. What did we do? Uh, Watch TV? What we usually do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm Good like, times. what did I do? I I'm sure know. I did something fun. We watched movies. Movies. A lot of movies. Movies. Yeah. Ate food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drank Sounds things. good. Boring. Mm-hmm. Shall we discuss something way more fun? Yes. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. Zena, it's mm-hmm. been a while. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like so does everybody listening. But we're back and we're ready to discuss uh, a pretty fun topic, I think. Uh huh. Something, something, something we've touched yeah. upon before. We have, we have. Yes. But uh, now this, it's our big extravaganza yes, episode this about is the, it. This is the ultimate. <laughs> the this ultimate. is we can just let loose the yeah. whole yeah. episode, not just one bit of an episode. <laughs> Okay, so our friend of the podcast, Phoebe, has requested mm-hmm. the following mini topic. Hi, Phoebe. Xeno Warrior Princess. Mm-hmm. Reboot. Mm. Or revival. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. And then kind of like subtitle. And what would you like to see as possible storylines, characters, etc.? Okay. So okay. We're restyling this as since we have talked about this before. Yes. As our Xena reboot slash revival extravaganza. Yes. Yes. The final word. It is. This is it. <laughs> the this final is the. Word. This is the big. This is the big conversation about reboot revival. This is the a friend in need of. <laughs> Oh my god. It's not going to be five revival. hours that's long. A, that's a it's high not, bar. It's just not going to be high bar. No, it's me, so. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> just giving it some gravitas. Um, yeah. No, I think we've gotten, uh, it's probably just come up here and there and then maybe in a mailbag, mm-hmm. but, uh, and we've alluded to our thoughts and alluded to actual ideas, but I don't think we've ever really given a big reboot slash revival pitch. Which we yeah. will do. But we have st- stated our opinion, which we can yeah. restate. Sure. Not, okay, so let's start this off with, like, this is such a big trend right now in TV, movies, etc. Mm-hmm. Reboots and revivals. Yep. They're everywhere. Some pe- people get mad because there's too many or what have you. And everyone's like, we don't need it. We don't need it. The original's Wait, yeah, better. Where's the originality? Like, yeah, where's the originality? I don't know. I have no problems with reboots and revivals of things. If they're good, yeah. If they're good, hooray! <laughs> it's just, I, a big if. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a lot of just how art works, you know. Um, but obviously, people get very attached to the thing that they loved originally. So you see a lot of problems with like when there are new things and changes yeah. and stuff. Okay, but what is the difference? What is a reboot? What is a revival? Go. A revival is when you continue the original show in a slightly new format. So a revival for Zeta Warrior Princess would star Lucy Lawless and Renee O'Connor. Like the and, Will and Grace revival. Right. And and you'd yeah. probably have some kind of continuity with yeah. the earlier show. So you would probably start it by resurrecting Zena, mm-hmm. for example. Uh, <laughs> though you wouldn't have to. She spends the entirety as a ghost. <laughs> now, I have already want to throw a wrench in this. So the Will and Grace revival. Yes. It kind of ignored things that Will and Grace. Yeah, in the in the finale, and just pretended it didn't happen. Right. So in that way, it kind of slightly rebooted it. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! Um, but no, that's a revival. The X Files was a revival. Yeah. Twin uh, Peaks. Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. Mad about you. 
Roseanne um, slash the Connors, because <laughs> that was a whole well, thing. Well, that's interesting, right? Because <laughs> I, there's a whole bunch of, like, different things that you can say, because the Connors then is a spinoff. Yeah, but it was forced to be a spinoff. But it was forced to be a spinoff. <laughs> um, and then, so, like, a reboot. That, okay, so what's a reboot? So a reboot is where you reimagine the entire universe of the show. So you do not cast the original actors, and you may actually not even have the central characters be, like, the original characters. Uh, it's more of a heartbreak from the prior show. Mm. Mm. Well, examples. Big exa- oh, oh can, do you want to? No, go ahead. Big I was going to say, well, I think we should yeah. have examples of a, what a reboot is. Like those, Number one. The J.J. Abrams Star oh. Trek uh, oh, movies yeah, are a, a reboot. Sure, a reboot. yes. Uh, Battlestar Galactica. Battle Star Galactica. Galactica. I was going to say Battlestar Galactica, yeah. For sure. Uh, although that did feature... Original cast members, but as other characters, different characters, which is what I would want for wait, wait, Lucy wait. and Ray. We're not there yet. <laughs> Jump in the gun. <laughs> we're just talking about. We're just setting the stage. We're okay, just okay, okay. That. No, I wanted to ask a question because this is something that's been bothering me. Okay. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything, and I'm sorry. I know it's supposed to be mini. <laughs> Fuller House. Oh, <laughs> your favorite reboot or revival? Oh. It's a re- reboot vival. Reboot vival. Because <laughs> yeah. because it's the same exact concept mm-hmm. of Full House. Yeah. They like this, they took it, but it's they fuller. switched the characters. Yeah. Like they're grown up now, but it's literally the same premise. Yeah. And they so couldn't get the Olsen twins. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Rebootful. Yeah. yeah it's a I mean it's true that there there's yeah, there's what no about hard and fast way of defining these things. Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> Probably a revival? I haven't seen it. It's, do you know the do you know what, it, no. what happened in it? So it's like, yeah. do you, Vera? No. I, know, I just know everybody, no. you know, all the, the peoples who are in it. They Well, they were themselves, playing themselves, doing a re- revival. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, the meta. That's like Wait, a that's whole separate the, category. Sure. That's like the comeback, HBO comeback Right. Like second version, the revival of the comeback. Oh, the comeback. But they were themselves the characters. Right. Like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there's all kinds of stuff we can do is my is my point. Yeah. Like we've reached a point of just bananas content. There's so much so there's of it. Charmed of, Charmed right. re- reboot. reboot. That's a that's Party of Five Reboot. reboot. Roswell yeah. reboot. reboot. Yeah. Yeah. Re- reboots, I think, are, well, actually, they're at this point both very common because there's just nostalgia of all different kinds. But I literally, think. all of yeah. these ver- examples, they um, they just made it like less white. Yeah. So, Which is great. It's yeah. great. Um, yeah. There's a lot of great opportunities yeah. uh, in that regard. I feel like revivals are harder. Revivals yeah. are harder because you yeah. need to get all your ridges. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you have to like. Well, I told a story and I finished it. Yeah. So, do these characters need to continue? Like, I would argue the X Files did not. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I'm grateful for the two Darren Morgan episodes, but it did not need to exist. You know, et cetera. Aww. So, and with that in mind, I think it let's. Yeah. I also think like Z an interesting example mm-hmm. of that is uh, Twin Peaks: The Revival, mm. which is almost kind like, of also a rebootful. A reboot. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, like making a case for why we shouldn't be asking for yes, it to exist. Like exactly. within the show, yeah. that's sort of its thesis statement is that you longing for this like missed opportunity from 1989, mm-hmm. you're like never gonna get it. Right. Uh, which I think is a really smart way of re- oh, it's approaching a uh, revival because in the end, I don't know how satisfying they can be, and this is kind of right. leading into yes. our Xena. It can be very satisfying if, unlike David Lynch, you actually like a satisfying revival. finish a thing and don't set up new stuff in your thing and then be like, this is done. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, is there an ex- can you name an example of a revival that you felt like, you know, took up the torch? And I thought the satisfying? Will and Grace revival was really good. Um, and it's just like Until they all started Did dating each other. Did you need it? Did I need it? Life. No, but I but I enjoyed it because I loved mm-hmm. Will and Grace. Like I enjoyed. See, I, I thought it was actually like the way that they brought it back and like the way that everybody was was really like whoa. But I do think that the longevity of something like that is very short because it's like you're 
feeding on the nostalgia, but and like delivering, you know, you're and you're still being like, oh my god, look how you know how great everybody is. Like, oh my god, I missed you know Jack doing crazy stuff. Right. Karen. I feel like it can be good for some of the actors' careers, which is, in a way is a separate consideration, but an important one. Which is if we just want to get more work for Lucy and Renee, <laughs> advocating for a revival might be one way of doing that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think there are any good TV revivals. <laughs> I also thought that the the uh, Roseanne one was actually really good too. It was pretty it, good. It actually. honestly was until I mean she's a crazy person yeah. and she like combusted her own yeah. uh, very successful revival. But like the things they dealt with, like the way that they progressed those characters from the ni- early '90s to like now, like the fact that she drove an Uber, she was addicted to pain pills. Mm. One of their daughters is an alcoholic. Like that, they hit stuff that I guess I'm really seeking in comedies nowadays because I got really addicted to stuff like uh, Un- Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and um, Maria Bamford's show, like things that deal with like not funny things and in, in a, a quote unquote funny, funny format, comedy. Yeah. yeah. So that stuff was. Um, I thought that was successful. Okay, but so Vera, I do not watch the comedy. Oddly, Vera, of the three of us, I feel like Vera is the most pro <laughs> revival in general. If and it's yet, good. aren't you rather against uh, the idea of a Xena revival yes, specifically? Very much so. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, explain why. I don't think <laughs> that it would work. I, there's well, certain things that would work, there are certain things that would not, and this would not work, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I do advocate for them making an appearance out of respect yeah. and, like, good faith and being into the thing that, like, launched them and was so important to so many people, but not as Zena or Gabrielle. Jumping off of that, I do remember, I think, the last time we were asked this question uh, and talked about it a little bit, I was very, like, anti even having them be in there because yeah, I was, like, in the moment, I was, like, I yeah. think they would be distracting to me. <laughs> yes, that is what you said. I think you would Which get used to that. I, it depends on just like how often the characters would appear. I just went through also a list, uh, and most of the stuff is a reboot, or a, I don't know. There's nothing that's actually great or that you ever <laughs> need in your life. And let's also keep in mind, too, that reboot is literally just a fancy word for remake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the comeback on HBO starring Lisa Kudrow <laughs> is a really good revival of yeah. the comeback right. from the early two um, thousands of that. that but was, I feel like that's a very so, specific and it finished situation. in one thing yeah. and it was really good. So okay, so we are all. I feel on the let's let's all agree. Are we all on the same page? We would like a Xena reboot. Yes. 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 For sure. Revival. I think for me, I don't. I would not want. Because I am very satisfied with the show itself and the way that it ended. And I don't think that revisiting these characters now, played by the same cast of people, will be something that I... It's something that I need. I don't need that. I don't need it. I'm not saying that it couldn't be good. I'm just saying that I feel like it would not be good. And also just having lived Mm -hmm. through the X-Files thing. Yeah. No. (laughs) Um... So that's where I'm kind of coming from. Like, I'm satisfied. I don't need more of this same story. I would like to have, I would like to do something new and different with this. Yeah. These characters. But the the thing about, like, reboots is that they would be hitting upon similar things. Like, for instance, like the Star Trek reboot, like, even though it was supposed to be a big secret and I guess it failed, but like, yeah, they had con again, you know, it's, you, right. you can't you, not you have do certain some of big the greatest things. hits. Yeah. You have to the, do the greatest. The hits. hope is that as a reboot, you can like reimagine those yeah. and do some, you know, make them mean something new. The best right. reboots are not the ones that just rehash all yeah. the old stuff, just as you remembered it. Right. It's the ones that actually have like a perspective, like mm-hmm. Battlestar Galactica being one I mean, of that's like the most shining example. I, I think, yeah, it's such a brilliant show. And you know, that one goes so far that it's like, you know, you go back to the original BSG and you're just like, this ha- has almost nothing to do with the thing I like, <laughs> yeah. you know? Right. So, I yeah. mean, uh, yeah, I, I I totally, those in the end are, are kind of the ones I gravitate to, are the ones where it's like someone kind of comes in and, and goes like, I like that original thing, but like, I just want to tell an all new story yeah. that, you know, has elements of that thing. 
but like, let's like... make it entirely serious versus. Oh, that's true. The that, and that is what BSG did. Yeah, yeah, that's what BSG yeah. did. Yeah. It was amazing and had like 9 11 allegories and right. crazy Early stuff. 2000s. Like, mm-hmm. wow. What would you, this is a little off topic, but okay. what would you call like, you know, the new Star Wars movies? Um, sequels. I mean, they are sequels, but they yeah. are also they are also revivals. They're hybrids, yeah. So they have mm-hmm. reboot elements. They obviously have re- revival yeah. elements. You could actually say that you know those two different instincts were at war with each other a yeah. lot. You yeah. know, the parts of Star Wars that wanted to be a new story versus the parts mm-hmm. of Star Wars that were sort of about resolving mm-hmm. the, the old stuff. Um, That's actually yeah. a great point in this discussion to bring up because I think and like Star Wars is. Uh, universal almost in a sense so everybody can kind of see uh, where these feelings would be coming from where a lot of the difficulty and like arguments and debates Mm -hmm. and hard times that people are having with the sequel trilogy are kind of based on how you feel about the original thing yeah yeah whether you think that the original had problems that needed to be fixed or updated or whether, you know, for you, the original thing is sacred and you kind of just want to, like, you know, live in that paradigm forever. And I think there's a lot of... there's There are very, like, loud voices, I think, in this... in Xena fandom that... And I'm not saying we don't consider the original show sacred in any way, but, like that is clear too with like people's ideas of if they want to reboot a revival that there's like revival only I am only going to see Lucy Lawless as this character I will never accept anybody else as this character and it's because of your attachment to Mm -hmm. the original thing yeah Yeah. and also the big thing with that and um, this is kind of close to the original Battlestar Galactica which is that it has a very specific style that was from a specific time Mm -hmm. And reviving it now, you got to consider, do you want to... Because television progressed so much since then. Do you want to bring it to the new times? Or Mm -hmm. like, do you want to only continue it as it was from a specific time period? And I would argue you can't continue (laughs) Xena as it was because it is profoundly 90s. Yeah. Yeah. It is profoundly of its time. (laughs) But everything that is made at a time is mostly of its time. Mostly of its time. In different ways. There are some exceptions. Um, Twin Peaks would be a great one where it's like, that was not a show from 1999. No. It's a specific, like, this is a show from David Lynch. (laughs) And and it'll be that way whenever. But But it looks like it is. You know, it it, 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 it has some, yeah. And it's dealing with, like, TV within it, TV yeah. that it was of that time yeah. uh, to well it was dealing with soap operas and then mm-hmm. the revival sure wasn't yeah. so yeah. Um, right it's like and a, it's sort of like lush filmic quality versus the like the gritty, digital digital yeah. look of the of, of David Lynch of now the, the revival <laughs> uh, so yeah I mean I think it's interesting how you can yeah. kind of play with uh, the changes in technology yeah. And, yeah. and not just technology but taste so and yeah storytelling yeah yeah, yeah. 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 when well, that's the biggest thing was Zena too is that like obviously we talk about we love the serious episodes we love the drama the big melodrama we love that um a a lot of the comedy and a lot of the like meta humor uh and things like that are very very rooted in that time period even though i i don't think when you watch it it doesn't feel um as dated to me as some other shows from the time are like i feel like if you go back and watch buffy it feels a little more dated in a way but that's because they're grounded in being literally set in 1997 yeah, right the pop yeah. culture yeah. references and are like usually more. Yeah, where helps, xena helps is set xena. in ancient times exactly. so it's kind of it's its own universe that yeah. exists this way so it helps it out a little mm-hmm. bit but it's still a very particular type of politics yeah. and very particular like comedy and stuff so uh, do we bring that in to the reboot? And that is a big thing. Mm-hmm. That's such a big thing because then it's like, how much do you get, how much is the spirit of the original needed in the new thing? And Everybody's going to have a different answer yeah, yeah. to that. Yeah, everybody's going to have a different answer to that. Yeah. And like, what would be successful nowadays you know would right would that work nowadays what it what is even the closest thing to something like this that's on right now i wouldn't even know i wouldn't even know are you talking about specifically like the humor yeah, aspect like a, like yeah 
Well, uh, comedies. Like adventure comedy. I don't know. Think. I'm sure there's something. Adventure we can com- come like up with Send us your ideas. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. That's terrible. I've and never I don't seen watch it. it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah. It's... And of course, it's really hard to name a show that, you know, is such a like chimera of genre. Right. Like today, you wouldn't have an, a show that's like, I'm the comedy episode today. You know, I'm doing farce. <laughs> and then the next one, it's like, everybody's kids are dead. You know, you, <laughs> you, wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have that. Maybe it's in needed. General. Maybe now is the time yeah. no. for the Xena reboot. Don't be advocating the for the return of episodics. <laughs> Fuck them. I didn't say Go that. Hell. Episodics I didn't can say that burn. specifically. That's what you were, there's no way you can have a well, serious. Well, did this fuck episodics can burn like uh i don't know i feel like the mandalorian made a pretty good case for no wrong you're wrong absolutely wrong i disagree wrong disagree it doesn't need to be that way Mm -mm, it could easily be amazing with a full set of characters that you follow. And did Mandalorian sure, but kind it also of, in was... the end, make a case for its serialized elements? What? Yeah, I it did. <laughs> yeah, but You're in the waiting same for way... them to get to that. But uh, like how serialized got there. too. Like, yeah. this has a through line story. Right. So, so does The Mandalorian. Yeah. But you can, like, sit down and watch an episode of The Mandalorian. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can sit down and uh-huh. watch an episode of Mandalorian and the entirety wish for the next one to follow that plot. And like those characters in that story. Jeez, I found it refreshing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think even a lot of, you know, quote unquote serialized television today does have some sense of standalone, or at least I think successful TV shows do, where like hmm. an individual episode is does have like, you know, one thesis statement, one story. Sure. Uh, like, you know, I, I like to think that our Xena reboot mm-hmm. would have the ability to just, you know, set a story an episode story in one place it might further a sure. longer arc but you could tell a satisfying 42 minutes of tv or it or would be an hour 60. as it would be streaming it would be for hbo <laughs> <There> would, <laughs> netflix <laughs> we would have freedom we could do whatever but yeah, you think of something like really experimental like the OA, which did kind of have discrete episodes that were like <sighs> the OA <laughs> had insane problems. <laughs> Never do your show when you just tell each other stories as they did on the OA. Well, but yeah. yeah. I think for all of us we now because in part because it's like what TV is doing now, we like the idea of having a serial a more fully serialized version yeah. of yeah. Xeno Warrior Princess in part. Yeah, let's get into because, it. Because uh, the original show you know only did that sometimes. Right. So yeah. I think if you wanted to reapproach the show, that's one area where you could be like, the show was successful when it was doing this. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see more of this. Yes. Um yeah. And I think people would expect it. I think I don't think people would tune in expecting episodic television yeah. anymore. I think it would be a wild choice. Yeah, it would, it would certainly <laughs> you're, you're be. You're fine a with the Mandalorian. Being it's that still way. a serialized season. Yeah, like yeah, it's like you know, like Lost in Space. That is way more ser- like uh, yeah. serialized. Like they yeah. honestly, I don't remember how season one was, but season two they at least like have two episodes to solve a thing. Mm. You know, that's different. Mm. So anyway. Anyway. Yes. Our our Xena reboot. Yes. Okay. So we have... We We've been do sitting have on this one. for we have years. Been on. We're like, oh. And mostly I, I want to just like credit where credit is due. This is like all you guys. Well, um, this was a reaction to what we found out hobbies. what was okay. hobby yeah. script. So, yes. So, so, we should talk about hobbies a little bit. Sure. Oh, yeah. We should sure. get in. Re- refresh. Okay. Go ahead. So, <laughs> Javi... Who uh, we love from other things. Yeah. Yeah, from uh, The 100. The, well, yeah. A serialized show. And, and, and apparently Dark Crystal. The Middle Crystal, Man. Uh, oh, sorry. It was sure really fun watch. back and in the day. I think that was episodic. Well, it was also from Old. a good chunk of time ago. Yeah. Oh, Dark Crystal? Yeah, he's yeah. currently on the new Dark Crystal and has been getting rave reviews for that. I haven't seen it, I but I've, do I've heard it's excellent. I like that, yeah. Uh, So I'm happy for him that he landed somewhere solid. Um, But he very kindly made available to all his script for the Xena uh, reboot. The most recent. The most recent draft of of the script. Oh, no, that's what I meant. Like, it's just the most recent, like, attempt or whatever. As far as we know, the only one that got this far. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, He also was um, a a guest on Xena Warrior Biz. Yeah. So if you want to hear him talk about it, go there. Uh, So yeah, um, we 
uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've talked kind of a little bit about our reactions to his take. Yes. There were things about it we liked. Yes. It's much more sort of serious and gritty. Yes. As, as a, an imagining of, yeah. or of, it seemed, of the world it appeared of the that show. Way. Yeah. Uh, Zena has like a tragic backstory where she is enslaved. Yeah. Um, but it made one particular choice that we really stumbled over, and that is that Zena and Gabrielle meet in the first episode, of course. Uh, Gabs nurses Zena um, back to health after oh, that sounds great. she's been no. yeah. <laughs> severely beaten up by Hercules. That sounds like my jam. Hercules is a is a sort of a villain mm-hmm. in, in this, which we liked. We thought yeah. that was a bold take. Uh, and Zena had been kind of like the woman behind the scenes, like doing the labors for him and you yeah. know, not getting any credit. So there was like a, That's fun. a fun feminist dimension to that story. But anyway, Gabs is nursing Zena back to health and they spend all this time together in a montage, <laughs> a, like a training montage where <laughs> Zena is like training Gabs how to fight uh, and like months go by and they fall in love. In the montage. In the, montage. In the, in the first, first episode. episode. And then there's like an elaborate plot about doppelgangers and Gabs gets kidnapped. Did they they kept, they kept that element. Yeah. They doppelganger kept, they element. The doppelganger. It would be one that I would probably get Toss, rid of. Toss drop, it. Drop that, please. Airlock. <laughs> maybe it's just like, maybe it's more the sense that like characters would look alike and you don't have like right. photography back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so they, like, Only paintings. People who looked very similar. Yeah, I mean, that, it was, I think, sort of that. Like, it was yeah. like a king's daughter, you know, and she was going to go be the, um, you know. Yeah. That was an episode of Xena. Yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> Xena's done that too. Because that there is actual, you know, historical cases uh. of, of things like that going on. Uh, but anyway, like at the end of the episode, Zena's kind of like going after Gabrielle, who's like her true love to save her. And it's like this, you know, covers a lot of ground in, <laughs> you know, 60 pages of script. Uh, but we were like, you know, we wanted to see them fall in love, like in the show, not right. in a, not in, in a single montage. Yeah. Uh, so we were frustrated by that. We felt like that was, you know, that Javi kind of just wanted to get to the status quo in which they're really, you know, cute yeah. romantic and partners. I, I appreciate that, and then I do feel like he was like, oh, he. I don't want to misquote him, but I feel like there was some stuff like wrapped up in there where it was like, oh, well, if this was like a man and a woman, they would be like making yeah. out by the end of episode one. And I'm like, well, like beg to differ. Number one, like I think um, there's yeah but, a lot of shows where that would not you know, happen and I do feel like we're episode. kind of past the Mulder Scully or like moonlighting thing where it's like the, the will they Rachel. won't they forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody really wants like that. I don't feel like that's what we're talking about either. But like like even something like. Farscape where they like yeah. okay maybe they kiss in the fourth episode but mm-hmm. then you still have a whole season of like you know just something building a little of building it's like slowly yeah. building it so it's like having them like kind of fall in love with the montage and then Xena running off to save her true love or what have you by the end of episode one it's like no I'm I'm here I'm invested in these two characters and watching their relationship that is the yeah. show yeah that's the what I want to watch across all of the seasons and that's what I would take you know, from the original, because that's what the original is. I would take that. Yeah. Slow burn. So, yeah, that I think w- that was our kind of takeaway from uh, reading Hubby's mm. script, was just, like, we, if we were going to pitch this, we would want to see that relationship develop, you know, over yeah, the seasons sure. from beginning to end. No montage. No montage. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah, we went ahead and uh, wrote a pitch for right. Xena <laughs> Warrior Podcast, Xena Warrior Princess. So nobody steal it nobody and get yeah. it made. Listen, one time I wrote a spec script for Battlestar Galactica and I uh, I was interning for like um, a production company and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, here's my thing. What do you think of it? And then coincidentally later, I see an episode of VSG that oh. had the same plot as me, but like flipped. Whoa. Like I was going to do like kamikaze um, Cylons with like a virus attacking the people, but really they ha- on the real show, uh, there was episode arc about... A virus attacking the Cylons. Oh. So clearly, they took it from me. No one had ever Obviously, thought of using a Cyrus. It's my virus script. Warfare before. It's definitely from mine. <laughs> 
from me. They stole it. Wow. So well, in any case, if we see this reboot, we will sue. None of our pitches are getting anywhere near like Rob Tappert and the people. He's who listening are. right now. Well, he can steal it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't honestly, mind. I mean, can we be like bar wenches in the background at least? Yeah, that's all we ask is to be wenches or goons. We will accept yeah. goons or wenches. Yeah. Okay, what did, what did we come up with uh, that was fun? <laughs> this is an outline outline. I'm sure yeah, everybody has. Very vague. Oh, yeah, very no. down. This we is scribbled not, this on a napkin in a bar. We yeah, were basically. W- walking around <laughs> talking about it, and then somehow it what ended up in this document. What are you talking about? This isn't, like, pitch ready. <laughs> <laughs> and then also you can uh, send us your a reboot idea. Yes. Oh, we'd love Please. to hear other people's. Um, so we have ours. Yes. And let's go. Let's okay, so I was imagining for the first episode, one, you know, you think about the original pilot for, you know, Xena. <laughs> you know, that one. <laughs> Sins of the past. Yes. Uh, and I really like it, but I would love to just see an episode from Gabrielle's perspective. Like, I want to meet Xena through her eyes. Ooh. Sure. So you're immediately cementing that this show is Gabrielle's show, really. A, a little bit. Kind of like yeah. Scully yeah. is like our, you know, into the X Files. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Throw down. Like Gabs yeah. is our <laughs> eyes. Yeah. Uh, so I like to imagine that we just get first like a sense of like Gabrielle's day to day. Yes. In her village. Sure. Where she is. She'll sing from Beauty and the Beast. Yes. <laughs> Little Absolutely. Town. It's a quiet village. Okay. Except, like, make it at least more explicit that she is a baby lesbian in okay. this town. And yeah. how, how it's not only, a musical. Vera game. will not allow it's this not to be a It's not a fucking musical. Nobody will allow this to be a Although musical, that so. song from Moana is very much about gaps. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I love, that's a great How far I'll song. go? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's so yeah. good. <laughs> it's about her sometimes. It's a gap song, for sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, go. Off track, off track. Yes, how is she a little baby Les? So I think it would be a slightly similar situation where you know her family doesn't understand her and is pressuring her to, like, settle down into a heteronormative lifestyle mm-hmm. with a man. It's not to be purred, but it could be purred. <laughs> uh, Don't need to be that name yet. Yeah. It's a reboot. But yeah, I haven't figured out, like, if that's, like, if he's a nice guy or just, like, a nice. boring guy. Or... I don't think he should be bad. No, he's he just like be a, bad. He's, he's just totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. But she is not into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, We see her going down to the river by the village and watching the girls bathing. Well, she's, let's just say she's doing her laundry, maybe. Yeah, she's doing her laundry. She's not creeping on girls. She's not creeping on girls. But you (laughs) get that sense. Her eyes wander. Don't make her be jocks through that one time. No, no. Her eyes wander to where they want to go. I was more (laughs) thinking of that scene where Xena is just sort of like sitting, feeling sorry for herself. I think it's in the episode, um, what is it called? Ties That Bind. Mm. with her dad you know fake dad Mm -hmm. Uh, and she's like sitting and watching these women bathe and Mm. it's just this like moment of like longing Mm -hmm. yeah not creepy jocks or behavior just like why you know why am I excluded why am I Mm -hmm. different Mm -hmm. Uh, so I feel like yeah just sort of honestly I could watch a whole episode that was just (laughs) gabs like you know not fitting into her town and you know having I'd like to see you know the beginnings of her barding you know maybe trying to bard to people in her town and like they don't even listen maybe the pilot can be like an hour and 15 minutes (laughs) this is honestly this could be condensed into like a five minute Sure. Sequence. A montage. Not a montage. <laughs> yeah, but not a montage. Uh, so then a dark and beautiful stranger oh my God. rides into town. Oh my God. And oh. Gabs oh. is immediately just like, yeah. <laughs> Which is true to the original spirit uh, of the program. And it's, I, I, I haven't figured out like what the like plot exactly is. Like, but I think at first Zena would be like, I'm in trouble. I need yeah. you to like harbor me, mm-hmm. uh, and and Gaz would be like, "Yeah, all right." <laughs> um, uh, but then it slowly becomes clear, maybe to the audience, if not to Gaz, that Zena has another agenda. Yeah, and that she actually is scouting the town 
for her army to invade. Mm -hmm. Like, this Mm -hmm. is still Warlord Xena. She's not hiding out. She has not... She's not a victim. Yeah, she is not a victim. She is manipulating Gabs Uh and and has evil plans. Yeah, and pretty genius for her because she's always going in first. She's just a lady. Nobody is like, thinks any other thing about her. And I like this. I like this take. But the more she gets to know Gabs, it's <laughs> montage. <laughs> no, no montage. Uh, she begins to have doubts about this. Yeah. So when her army does invade, I think she would stop them at least from attacking Gabs. So now would this be the same situation where she goes back and like you got that uh, the goon, her like second in command, probably who's second like command. she's like we're no longer attacking this town, and he's like what the fuck, like we're ready, like the guys, you know, their blood is up, like they want to attack, have you know, kill, pillage, etc. Uh, and she's like no, 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 not this one. So would they like you know do the same thing, kind of like disregard? I, think, her? I can definitely see it becoming a mutiny situation yeah, where mutiny. they feel like. Uh, Xena is not the leader we thought she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put her in the gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, this yeah. is, a, I feel like, a very good update from us having to navigate the wonderful waters that are her, like, fucking Hercules and, mm-hmm. like, looking at a baby or whatever <laughs> that made her turn good yes. <laughs> on Hercules. <laughs> so, carry on. Yes, yes. <laughs> And I think then by the end of the pilot, uh, you have Xena obviously no longer with her army. She has maybe, hopefully saved the town. I'm I'm open to maybe the town actually getting raised in the process. And Gabs is homeless. And Mm, Xena having to uh, take her under her wing in part because she feels responsible for the death of everything she knows. Her whole family? I'm willing to entertain it. I'm just saying. (laughs) How? Oh, Kylo well, Rennie, are you making well, wait Zena? a second. <laughs> like, a little bit Kylo Lilla Rennie. could be, like, out of town. Yeah, you know, okay, like, maybe it's going to turn out that Lilla was, yeah, boarding school. <laughs> so I mean, she could be ma- her sister could be married That's and living true. somewhere else. That actually, I kind of so. like the idea of Lilla being an older uh, sister. Yeah. 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 So she's like completely out of the house. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I will accept this. <laughs> okay. But just off Gaz's parents because I don't have a storyline for them. <laughs> so. All right. Wow. Cool. So then Xena takes her under takes her, her wing. Under her and, wing. Uh, they and, have to stick together. And they have to stick together. Because they're both like victims now. But, you know, there's obviously a lot of, of emotional baggage because they're both figuring everything out now. Xena so has, this all sounds very serious. The tone of our reboot here is serious. serious. Deal with it. Serious <laughs> all I the think time. So. Well, with bits of humor. Yeah, I think there's so humor like you yeah. probably any show has bits of humor. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like to an extent. Yes, mm. like BSG had guys Balter. The BSG clone the hundred has uh, Murphy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> people make humorous little bits yeah. here and yeah. there, but and it's like, not funny. Like jocks are funny, right? <laughs> the one thing that we I feel like haven't t- like figured out for our pitch is like where, how the gods exactly fit into these plots seriously yeah. and consistently <laughs> so that they're actual seriously. characters yes so you, you don't want them to sort of be the kind of humorous like I, element I, I, some of them can be because there's so many of them yeah you know what i mean it would be an opportunity to kind of jazz up the kind of yes. gritty dark grounded world of of xena and gabrielle um yeah, I mean, we we can continue this Mira's conversation like, I'm open to because talks. I just can't be like all of all of the time. <laughs> Everybody can't be silly. Like silly cannot be a word associated with this. And as we all know and discuss, when you see Xena for the first time and you're a complete you know fool, you can say that looks silly and I don't want to watch it. Right, I did right. that. Yes. So we want to get away from this. Yes. Okay, but there's so much more. There is so okay. much more. All right, so we, we sketched out a little bit of what that first season yeah. would be like. I think we all decided that one really smart idea Javi had was yes. to make Hercules a bad guy. Yeah, so, I love part, that. In part because doesn't that reflect <laughs> because we hate him and... some of our feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so he love can it. continue being the bad guy. Love it. Uh, so I think for our version, we really liked the idea of having Hercules be this sort of guy who styles himself as a hero, who has almost like 
an overdeveloped sense of justice. So he has probably been hunting Xena for years because she's this warlord who's caused all this destruction. And he's like, you know, I'm a good guy and like she needs to pay. And he mm. just throughout this season will not listen to this argument that she is yeah. reforming herself. So wait, is he like the guy who says, I am a good guy, and he's like really not a good guy? Well, I think, yeah, I think there would be like a performative element of it. Like you would learn more about him and see sort of the ways in which he's like, you know, this power has gone to his yeah. head. In a way, I'm like, I'm thinking of like Najara, who, you know, mm. would also sort of say, well, I'm doing the right thing, but was willing to just mm. sort of like straight up murder people, you know, without really pausing to see, is is this really justice? Like da- Daenerys Targaryen. At the end. Yeah, kind of like think somebody actually, who like has become only uh, like a spotlight for like this thing that doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, creating bad guys when there aren't any. Maybe. Right. Yeah, and who's sort of like you know slowly becoming tyrannical about mm-hmm. it. So yeah, I think I think that could actually be a really interesting character and, and kind of in line with the mythic presentation of Hercules where he's often kind of held up as an example of the way that power can be misused. Mm. Uh, So yeah, I I think having a like him as the bad guy and be having a bad guy who in the first season would be like Xena needs to pay Mm -hmm. uh, for what she's done in a different way than say a Kalisto would make that argument. Put a pin in it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We also wanted to do a plot about Xena's family in the first season. So our pitch for this, which is very vaguely sketched in, (laughs) is that Xena, you know, back when she was in the warlord business, uh, would have a little brother. Well, not back in when like, well, she was, she when she was born. Like, yeah, she, had, she had a little brother. Well, when she was born, she did not have a little well, okay, brother. Okay, that's fair, fair. Then a little brother came along. <laughs> Let's see it. And I think he like you know, just emulated everything she did. Yeah. Like, she, which, she was yeah. his... It's like, pretty consistent to the original, yeah, right? Yeah, that that's true. Regard, so right? when Xena takes up arms, so does Lysias. When right. Xena becomes a warlord, so does Lysias. Now, why did she take up arms originally? Uh, we, ha- again, very vaguely, very <laughs> vaguely sketched in, that her Xena's dad, the head of the family, got killed when an army invaded Xena's village, which I guess would mm-hmm. still be Amphipolis. Yeah, why not? Uh, and Xena hence became the head of the family. She stepped up, and her brother followed mm-hmm. behind her. She yeah. was sort of his commander as she became more of a warlord, mm-hmm. and now he himself has become a warlord, mm-hmm. too. So I think you would have a subplot uh, in the first season of him being a warlord. Yeah. Uh, and I can totally see him and this Hercules villain interacting. Yes. Uh, and Xena t- trying to reform him. Yeah, I mean, that would be for sure a consistent plot. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly when that would get resolved. That could but it be would. a continuing element. That's like yeah. for sure a thing. Yeah, she'd, get, she'd save him. He would be saved and... Um, you know, we can continue our the the metaphor of like warlording and addiction and right. substance abuse and, and whatnot. So yeah, he can totally be saved. So yeah, I think that's everything we had for our first season. Yeah, of Xena that's Warrior, a lot. Princess the reboot. But then we also sketched out a little bit of <laughs> subsequent seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. All we have in our document about season two is one word. Kalisto! Yes! Exclamation point, exclamation point. And I think the reason we didn't really write down all that much uh, for her just like on her own is that, you know, we really like the character in the original. And I think everybody feels like there wasn't enough of her. Mm -hmm. And they just so, so quickly kind of leapt to her, you know getting god powers and mm-hmm. being, being immortal, immortal. and yeah. you know you you didn't really get to live long enough in the earliest iteration mm-hmm. of the character where she's just a human with a really interesting story mm-hmm. and a grudge and, yeah. and seeing you know the pressure that yeah. that put on Xena. The human story is where it's at and we would expand the shit out of that. Mm-hmm. 
So I feel like in our story, you know, she would be interesting coming after this Hercules villain who, mm-hmm. you know, also wanted to bring Xena to justice. Mm-hmm. But obviously for Callisto, that means something completely different. different. Uh, so that would be just a cool, you know, way of like graduating in terms of like the argument that yeah. we're, we're, we're telling. Yeah, I don't think we would have her becoming a god or, or having any sort of extra powers a little more yeah grounded grounded Callisto I like it so there's so she'd be like appear a lot more I think throughout season two I think she would be the Mm -hmm. the season two villain so Mm -hmm. she would appear a lot yeah I'm not exactly sure how how the situation would resolve but I think it would be you know she would still be around in some capacity in season three so that's yeah yeah well still. I mean I mean it's easy to think of her always as uh, the faith to you know Zena's right Buffy. so even so, if she you know yeah. goes off to prison you know she's gonna break out and come back and <laughs> cause some Kalisto troubles later. redemption arc OTP. but I think the Kalisto redemption arc would have to stretch over like the whole show oh yeah like oh, that yeah. could not be like in a single season no nope. that's like no nope. long game it's gonna be stuff. perfect it's gonna be amazing Everyone's gonna cry. So then, season three. Yes, yes. we Let's wanted do to do our version of the rift. Fuck yes. Yeah, we don't really know what exactly happens to cause the rift. I assume, something. Will. I assume not a dayhawk. No, no. storyline at all. Probably some kind of consequence of whatever Callisto. Yeah, is up yes. to. I, th- I think we'd Keep extend the Callisto storyline yeah. into whatever mm-hmm. happens in season three. Uh, but we were thinking that the rift would really be over sort of Xena backsliding mm-hmm. a bit in her hero's journey and really kind of falling back on her old ways. Yeah. Like, like it's quote, hard unquote, to change. Becoming bad. Like having, yeah. having... Falling off the wagon. Falling off the wagon. And Gabs, meanwhile, doesn't approve. No. And at first, I think, is trying to help her through it. But then, like, it goes too far mm-hmm. and Gabs has to step away. Mm-hmm. So there is a rift. No and child murders. No child murders. Probably not. Probably, probably no child murders. <laughs> probably no child murders. I'm, I'm open minded. <laughs> Maybe child. I mean, murders. there could be like for, like Kalisa could murder like Lila's baby, or something oh. like that. Yeah. Some kind of thing like that. So yeah, we were thinking for this particular plotline, you would need Kalisto as almost like the bad angel on yes. Zena's shoulder to go with Gab's the good angel. So Zena kind of veers away to hang out with the bad angel. She and Kalisto kind of become not kind of. She and Kalisto become an. Idol. Item. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's explicit. <laughs> <laughs> explicit item. Uh, and meanwhile, Gabs gravitates towards Aphrodite. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you have these two different couples to watch who are kind of being put into opposition with each other. And nobody gravitates towards Hercules. No. no, I don't know what happened. To him. <laughs> I guess he got killed. We didn't figure that out. I feel like no. I think eventually he he'd still be like, around. I think there could be like a team up, Zena and her, Maybe. like later. All right, keep, yeah. keep him around for something. Yeah, he's I mean, not you can't get rid of him. You, you he's can't, gonna, yeah, he, yeah. Like we'll have like a good actor, so be like you understand <laughs> where this character is coming from. Yeah, he'd yeah. be very good at acting, <laughs> and we like this character. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about like you know the way this would play out. This rift, I think Callisto, like Zeta, would go so hard that she'd alienate Callisto. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> right, because Callisto's like having her, like a her own co- redemption arc. Quiet is, like, crisis c- uh, coming. You know, like the little pangs of like, oh good, Kalisto. oh no, they're like ah. So, so actually, Kalisto begins to be like, oh, this is a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and, and goes to Gabs for help. Yeah. So I think you'd end up with a situation where, like, everybody is kind of against Xena. And Xena mm. would finally, like, have her her own crisis moment. Because she has to hit rock bottom. She hits her rock bottom. And she falls off a cliff. And come, comes back to us. She doesn't fall for Uh And at the end of that arc, Gabs would leave Aphrodite and go back to Xena and break Aphrodite's heart. No. Oh my God. My she breaks God. the heart of the, of the goddess, goddess of, of love. love. Wow. Oh my God. Give us an Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> Season <Wow>. three. <laughs> Wow. Historically, season threes for shows have always been like the best. I know. So. I think we we almost were like we don't, <laughs> season two. Some stuff happens. I don't know. We just want to write season three. <laughs> uh, 
a season four is very funny because we just have aftermath of this <laughs> question mark question <laughs> mark. Oh my god! Come up with our own damn villain. Yeah, so this could be an original villain, an original villain for season four. Yes, and we said that that would somehow help set up Twilight of the Gods. Yes, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so it's we, kind we, of the same as the original. We show. haven't been talking about it, but like there would be. You know the gods are a part of it. But yeah, they're around. So their twilight makes sense. And yeah. doing stuff and being yeah. around, but not in like the same way. No, as, and they yeah. would be actual characters. Could Aphrodite actually be the that cause? Uh oh, you don't want that. I don't. You, you don't know. want like a sad no, sad. no, no. an angry That's lady. Burnt. That sounds tropey. I don't yeah. Like it. Um, no. But she could be a huge she part of. Figured out. She, she would, would definitely be a part of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. She she obviously stands Zena Gabs. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think she'd like be sort of melancholy, like quietly nursing, like understanding why it had to happen, but sad about it happening. Yeah. And, yeah. and not being the villain. Just throwing it out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, you just got, spitballing. Gotta try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, so then even more vaguely, fifth season, we have Twilight of the Gods, but better. <laughs> <laughs> I think that says it all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then with some bullet points at the bottom for things we know we'd want to include, but we're not exactly sure what we'd want to do with them. The Amazons. Yeah. Yes. A big yeah. One. Um, the Oracle of Delphi, that would be really I would yeah. love that. I want that. That's some, a missed opportunity, I think, with the show that they yes. never, never went Hit there. there. Yeah. Spartans, Spartans, another interesting yep. yeah, uh, culture that you didn't see on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've talked about so many things over the years where we're like, oh, yeah, I'd love to see that on Xena. Mm-hmm. Like um, Pompeii. Yes, I want oh Pompeii God. real bad. Um, so I feel like, yeah, there are obviously a lot of opportunities to just like explore things mm-hmm. that the show didn't do. And Egypt, more Egypt. More Egypt, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's that's about it for our reboot. Yeah, so, yeah. And I just want to make it's, it clear: it's we would never just show <laughs> Artemis like just hanging out and then make her be like super important later because she wasn't a character. Everybody will become characters who is going to be featured. It's going to be all perfect. <laughs> yeah, we plan it out. Yeah, obviously there are places where we haven't planned it yet, but by the time we get to season four, we know exactly what exactly. we want to do. Where of do we course. see this? Like 12 episodes on like uh, what network vibe? 10 episodes. Ooh. 10 episodes. Okay. Bingy. 10 on. B- as a binge. Yeah. Yeah, you'd want Fuck them all yeah. to drop simultaneously. I don't know, that's people are reevaluating. Well, now. I meant like just 10 episodes, but like you would want to binge it once okay. But like there. do you want them all to drop like on Netflix or do you want... Um, or do you like the weekly, weekly slow burn? Which I don't. I mean, back to I don't really like it, but at the same back. time, I get it. You know, it's difficult when you get addicted to a show. Cause but you do want you see it. it like on a Netflix where it's not really beholden to like a network vibe? I see it as a as a streamer or a cable show, and I want it to not have like any strings or like I want it to be free. You Here's have to the pay money. For a service. Yes, no, I, no, <laughs> I don't, I don't mean, I'm sorry, I, I meant the creatives are free, they're not, beho- they're not beholden to something like, oh no, Commercials. kids are watching this, so we oh. can't have PBS, like a sex PBS, scene. PBS, you know, Warrior <laughs> So this has sex in it, like sex scenes. Yeah. This is not, Xena, the reboot is not for families in the way that maybe this original uh, one was like you're making it be like now it this be... is for adults or like really cool honestly kids. i think the audience would be the same as something like um, the witcher what <laughs> i mean that's pretty that's, that's i didn't watch more than like <laughs> half an episode but i feel but like it's on netflix yeah. i'm assuming that if yeah. they want i don't know what happens in it but it's like a fantasy show oh, yeah I mean, I like to think that teenagers would be really yeah. interested in our Xena you know, Warrior Princess. I don't think it would cool. be like tons of like blood and gore. And, there like, would explicit be blood. Sex, but it's I'm not sure there would be. Yeah, I don't think it would be sensationalizing yeah. those. No, moments. it's just like yeah. it's you know. I it's, think it's, it's just like, be presented as part part of life. Sure. Honestly, I guess the vibe of like the hundred. 
outfits. There's bl- yeah. blood all the time on there. People yeah, are but murdered. in a much more like you know we're not. They're like sexy. They're sexy. I don't want it in the CW <laughs> because CW is beholden to CW rules. Like, and that's very like young adult folk. Like, yeah, focus. like these are they're young. Like certainly Gabs is young. Um, I just don't want them to be like teens. Every show on CW is like a teen show. Yeah. Would you want like a the yeah? I mean, they were babies when they were on this show. Yeah, but they're so, not like, like there's a specific CW teen yeah. aspect. Don't right. put it on the CW. I'm just giving right. you an example. Of, so like a Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was thinking of like Hulu, Curious. but I'm like, I don't know. Hulu hasn't really come Hulu up with has a show. Ads if you don't have it for. Ad-free. And it goes weekly. But Hemi well. Tale is on there. It's not like they beholden to it. But they don't have like fantasy yet, right? They don't have anything that's like. Mm-hmm. They do horror and all kinds. And well. But yeah, I guess they don't have their big fantasy show yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like they should go one. on Netflix. <laughs> or okay, they can buy this and we can go weekly <laughs> with this. But you'd still want to binge it once the whole season drops. <laughs> You want to see? Well, if the yeah. first three will drop, right? right you That's can do the that. model. <laughs> Film with the first three, yeah. well, and then go weekly. <laughs> Beholden to the rights owner. Yeah. So this is it's more. Going this is where more just going. giving you a sense of the tone. What it yes. would actually yeah. be like. That's the question it. that yeah. I was asking. Yeah, yeah. the and tone who, and who is the Netflix. Would be. Yeah. So anything yes. goes. Yes, yeah. that's what yeah. I want. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Great. So, okay. Yeah, that right. was our pitch. We have a bonus pitch. Oh, yeah. We do. With some fun ideas in. Our friend Nora sent us her pitch. Nora of the words. Yes. Like we, abundance Nora of that, the words. that you heard today. So Nora's is much more, I would say, scholarly. Way, as, as way more scholarly. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, for her, I think it's about like fitting into actual Greek history. Nora mm-hmm. is pitching a show for people who like know history, this like is history buffs. PBSs. Yeah, <laughs> I think Princess. you can. No, we would make it so that like you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would you be, learn. I think you would. About you would learn art. things more but, than like, in our version. She seems more beholden to like this is the time period you can't do this the crazy well, thing see, and then this what and that. What like how the original show jumped around in history. That's true. Yeah. That's what I think, I think Nora, Nora wants to Nora set in a place and a time. take fewer and, liberties. Yes, and that's where we're at. She wants to, like, pick things and really live in those yes. things. Which is cool. Is in its way, a really, like, interesting take on the yeah. material that Rome, we didn't do. Yeah, yeah. Nora has completely cut out Rome from this, and she's way more interested in the Etruscans. We cut out Rome, too. You may no, have we never know. We never mentioned it. I never would want to cut out Rome. I, I could you be said, convinced but you to want to go to out. Pompeii. You want to go to Italy. Yeah, I want to go to right. Italy. We do want to go to Italy. And like, so I guess so. Yeah. But I'm you open to, like, dropping Caesar as one of the big bads. It doesn't have to be Caesar. It could be another emperor. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. So so going back to Nora's pitch, she would like the setting to be very explicitly in the lifetime of Sappho. Mm-hmm. Okay. She notes that Sappho's estimated dates coincide almost exactly with the dates of Solon, the great lawgiver of Athens. Solon's reforms included important rights for unmarried women and freedom for Athenian slaves. So that is a cool character mm. who would, it would be interesting to know. She doesn't actually say in this, like, I assume Solon is not seen as son. Like, no, no, this, this is, is a real, This is a Just real guy. A this is a coincidence. Yes. Uh, I would love, setting it in uh, Sappho's lifetime, I would love, like, uh, each episode to either begin or end with, with a, a Sappho, Sappho poem. poem. Or I like some kind that. of small you know whoa yeah, thing that you read that's very that would nice. be cool that she like grounds the whole is thing is there enough cosine well I didn't say a big thing okay. like, you can't read a long thing yeah. it would just be like a few words sure, sure, sure. yeah like a yeah. fragment sure, sure, sure. so Nora notes I love that, that. Uh, Grecian culture is pretty much at its height throughout the region and Rome meanwhile is just a podunk kingdom built on the ashes of Etruscan culture so with this specific temporal setting mm-hmm. anachronisms are solely associated with the gods I love I love this. I love this. Who exist outside time. This, for me, I think, is if there is the great debate about how to carry that element of Xena over into a modern show, I love this. This is like, the, this is the way to do it. You feel like the gods can be more colorful and yes. can't be. Then. Yes, there's not going to yeah. be Xena going, I hate long flights. <laughs> like the gods, go ahead, continue. So, so the gods will say that. The gods will they don't say have that. to be, they don't have to be that kind of humor, but 
I love that, that, that they're the ones that exist out of time. And so, and they kind of have this all encompassing, all knowing. Yeah. I'm getting a few red flags for it. I'm just going to say them out loud oh, right geez. now. Go for it, Vera. Two examples, Good Omens, American Gods. To, okay, but th- those are those shows are, that people like and like. Yes, are, but those people aren't uh, me. You know, so therefore, I'm getting In some reflex. ways, we're critically acclaimed, and like I, I just don't, don't know what the problem I is. Don't want, You're like, too successful. I don't want example. David Tennant showing up in like a Shakespearean rough, being like, "Oh, I'm a, uh, I'm Aries, and uh, let me give you." Some I do. I think that thing. that's great. I don't know. So some of Nora's examples of this, she says that the gods wear whatever era's clothing they fancy appearing in at the moment. Aphrodite changes her gender presentation according to her whims. Love. That's cool. That's really cool. Cupid is a fan of the Renaissance because they were fans of him. Hades is 100% based on Ted Raimi's Instagram persona. Yes. Mid-century suits and cocktail culture. Hades is a pretty nice guy, really just tired and a little melancholic. Played by Ted, of course. Perfect. I love okay. it. This I is a good see, spin on I these. See love. that, very and I would love vividly. to see this acting challenge for Ted. Yeah, I think it would, yeah. Be, it would be like a more good. muted. Yeah, like, yeah. I can and like see a dramatic that character. Performance. That description yeah. of the character yes. with his Instagram, I see it. Yeah, <laughs> I would a hundred percent watch that. Just that show about yeah. sad cocktail yeah, we could call culture. It Hades. Hades. It would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Going through the rest of Nora's pitch. She says that the gods know that Xena and Gabs are soulmates. Okay. So uh, therefore we do as well. And we do as well, but that Xena and Gabs only slowly become aware of this. So they get the slow hits. burn, but we're like in mm. on it yeah. and like watching all the drums. Okay. Guys, I'm still not over the Hades thing. So now would <laughs> would um would Tartarus be like a speakeasy? Yes. See, I love it. Yes, it would. You'd show up and yeah. yeah. Maybe you need a password. You'd go yeah. over like it's River pretty Sticks. Cool. Pretty cool. There'd be like tea lights. Yeah. Yes. All right, continue. continue. Uh, okay, so Nora kind of then goes into a paragraph about the themes of the show. She says that the overarching one would be the possibility of change. Uh, can Xena change her character or will she always be a warlord deep down? If she and Gabs are destined to be together, then was her choice to reform really a choice? Mm. Uh, meanwhile, you have Gabs who felt it was her destiny to be a bard. Is that true? Should she take another path? Mm. Uh, meanwhile, the audience knows that Podunk Rome will overtake Greece in dominance by several orders of magnitude, but the human characters can't conceive of such an upheaval of their world. So mm. there's dramatic That's irony there. Okay. Yeah. And I guess a, a kind of a larger iteration of that sense of destiny and choice. Oh. Um, <laughs> Nora also wants a temporary rift between Zena and Gabs. The rift is non-negotiable. Yeah, yeah it every, has to happen. Don't you love that everybody's version it's has just, a rift? It's it has so, to it's happen. A, I mean, it's the fandom has, you know, put this word, but it's the main characters must have conflict. Yes. <laughs> then you cannot get rid of the, it. Yeah. And there must be at least a few points where the conflict is significant. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the rift. So if if they break up in Nora's version, where you have this idea of them being fated to be soulmates, would an angry Xena decide that the gods are full of shit and nothing mm. matters? So I think that's an interesting version of the rift in which it kind of affects Xena's whole worldview. Like, if I'm not destined to uh, be with Gabs, like, am I destined to be good at all? Mm. I like this. She, she goes on and says that she would keep Lao Ma and Kalisto, but give them longer well-planned arcs. Yes. She wants to spend more time with Lao Ma in flashbacks. Meanwhile, Kalisto should recur through the entire run. She also wants to keep Baraya. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's like, where Vera draws the line. Like, well, because no, is silly. is sacred. I love Bar- Baraya, but he's Baraya's. silly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like well, us, he she, wouldn't she be. just has a note saying be a serious more Amazons. Yeah. More Amazons. More thought out arc for Gabs and Amazons. Yeah. Interesting, though, that while everybody wants this, no one has taken the initiative just, of yeah. like, just just putting it into the plot. Yeah. So that may be a problem later. <laughs> um, so then uh, Nora has a list of potential episodes. They include Sappho's exile to Sicily, Solon freeing the enslaved Athenians, and in parentheses, Xena had a hand in some enslavement in her warlord days. That I think including good. slavery more explicitly is a yeah. very important thing to do in the reboot. 
Yes. She wants a fresh take on a day in the life. She wants Ooh. the Egyptian two-parter. She wants, mm. she's, Nora's very into the Etruscans. <laughs> yeah. So she wants an episode about the mystery of what happened to the Etruscans. She wants, in general, for there to be an exploration of how young Xena was when she was introduced to violence and how that trauma shapes her life. So, mm. yeah, more exploration of trauma. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Sappho, as a recurring character... Yes. Nora says maybe seven appearances. <laughs> Very specific. 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 Seven. <laughs> that she would be a rad lesbian role model and mentor for Gabs's bardic dreams. Yes. Lesbos becomes a calm retreat for our girls, and it's where Gabs goes during the rift, played by Cherry Jones, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm joking. It's good. I mean, yeah. How can you argue with that? Can't. Yeah. Cherry Jones as Sappho. Like... Lesbos, the calm retreat for Gaz to hang out in. That sounds pretty beautiful to me. I love it. I want to see it. She wants more Hades, which makes sense considering her perfect yes. casting. And we conception. spun it off, so yeah. already. She also says, given all the death experiences from the main characters, wouldn't you need him to show up more? So yeah. That's a smart point. She also says there's uh, some opportunity for like using the anachronisms more. So like there would be things popping up in the show that would mean something to the audience that Xena and Gabs wouldn't really understand. So you could do like cool. a foreshadowing that way. Uh, finally, she well, not so finally. One, la- two last things. Yes. The first is Zena can't read. That was literally want, this time. Well, yeah. Don't you want Gabs to teach her? The only thing we want is Zena can't read, please. Milky, what? What? Br- 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 May. <laughs> <laughs> what are you giving her to read? <laughs> a league of their own. The best scene. And then uh, Nora's final wish is for all caps, more kissing and more lesbianisms. Correct. (laughs) This is great. I love them all. I will watch it all. I think there's a way to do this thing. Get it off the ground, people. It's fun to demonstrate the range of like what different people see. But also you can see how all these things could be in, you know, the perfect show. Mm -hmm. Rob Tebbert, so many free ideas. Take them, Rob. Take them. Alternative casting for Savo, Holland Taylor. I see what you did there. I see what you have done. Okay. All right. So those are the reboots that we have. I think, yeah, we are very... Pro-reboot. Pro-reboot. Yes. Uh, Pro-serious reboot. Uh, Yeah. I want to see it. Everything else gets one. Why not this show? I Mm -hmm. I had one idea for how to fit uh, Renee and Lucy into the show. Okay. Okay. I let me hear it. I thought it would be nice if we, we go to Athens, we see the theater scene, and they could be oh. actors in the theater. Oh, you don't want her to be playing, like a director? Playing Xena and Gabs. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I would I like, don't know about my that. My little meta heart would love it. Uh, so, like, they're so like in, the- in this reboot at some point, there, there's still that... Uh, layer where they're very famous i guess so and yeah that people would be doing... i would also just take them being actors like you know yeah. they're actors okay that's their thing yeah hmm. maybe just I like playing that. all sorts of fun things and you'd see them I like it. it would only be great if it was kind of like how the acting troupe on game of thrones worked where that that kind of like right pro, you know progressing on, on, on the characters and like you know gave uh, sort of a new layer to Cersei. I think mm, that could be really Arya. cool. I love it. Yeah. yeah. They would be the, uh, oh, I love her, and I can't remember her name. Essie Davis. Oh, Essie Davis. Yes, yeah, yes. that's yeah. such a cool character. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that could be interesting. And yeah, like that's obviously like such a storytelling tradition to have the, the play within the play, you mm. know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is my pitch for where they would to be open have to that. Xena mm-hmm. and Gaz. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel confident, actually, that they would be super into that. Yeah. Do you oh, think one good. of them would be like, like the director? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I would happily like bring them in and ask them what they'd want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that idea. Mm-hmm. Would, oh, it's good. Would, it's perfect. Would Rob, be so many free ideas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right. All right so. Reboot revival. We've answered the question. Reboot forever. <laughs> uh, final word. 
Yeah, I think we're we're <laughs> don't done yell now. at us if you want a revival. Okay, um, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's that. That's one. that. All right, yep, I we hope did that. You thank you it. for uh, for your patronage. Yes, uh, yes. Thank you, patrons. Yes, more to come. Yes. in the next couple of weeks. And, and check out as well the Lisa Lotus IMDb experience. I don't know why I have an accent all of a sudden. <laughs> Ongoing, um, exclusively on Patreon. Um, with the new app. New app dropping. dropping this week. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. <laughs> and um, we are also on the internet. com has everything you possibly need. It's got links to the episodes. It's got links to all the social media. Um, we're on Apple Podcasts where you can like, subscribe, and rate, and leave reviews. Uh, you can also listen wherever you listen to podcasts because that's just how that works. And we're on Twitter at Pod on Instagram, Warrior podcast facebook xena warrior podcast tumblr i guess xena warrior podcast still <laughs> but it seems a little like maybe we're not really on tumblr oh, <laughs> but, uh, but i'll go i'll go look and see what's going on <laughs> and maybe post some stuff okay those are all the things the power the passion the, the podcast, podcast. <laughs>